Well, hello! It's been a while, my friends. So today, I want to share a little experience I had last night um, dealing with the shadows. The shadows of the self. Sounds deep. Hopefully it's fun. So last night, around midnight, I decided to take our dog for a walk. I promised him I would, so I wanted to make sure that, and he's sitting right here so he might come into the video. But so we ended up going on, on our routine to the park. <clears throat> the wind was howling and the trees sounded incredible. So I had this little, this moment, and the, the, the moon was, was quite bright for only being about a, you know, a crescent moon. But it was lighting up part of the park, the field, and the trees that it you know were kind of blocking the the light, if you will, or the moon was coming in at a certain angle, had these shadows. And then I found myself stepping into the middle of the field away from the shadows because I kept hearing these noises. So I'm walking, and like I do when I when I have certain emotions arise, I ask myself. What is I'm, I'm talking to God? I'm talking to the universe, and I say, well, you know, what is what is this inside of me? That's why am I afraid to step into the shadows? And in that moment, I had that realization that I'm afraid to step into my own shadows. And I thought, you know, God, <clears throat> angels, and the universe, what is that about myself? What am I afraid of? What is holding me back? You know, what's... you hear here, Caesar. What's, what's holding me away from stepping into that place of fear, those things that I'm fearing in the physical reality? I'm afraid of the shadows because I'm afraid of what's lurking, what could be there to affect me. And all of a sudden, the prayer, I think it's in Psalms 23, I ended up looking it up. And it's the, that, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then it goes on to say, though, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And then, you know, and then in there it says, you know, the Lord will leadeth me through green pastures. You know, the Lord will lead me beside still waters. And, it's in, and it was interesting to me because I had this realization that I'm so afraid of stepping into my own fears. After all these videos that I've done over the years and after all this work, this meditating every day, sometimes twice a day, three times a day, doing my best to stay in union and connection with my, my higher self, my God self, I still have these fears of the unknown. And not only that, but of my non-faith, my non-belief, of my union with the divine. And it was just a very interesting realization of how afraid we are, because I am just an expression of, of the totality of consciousness. So. What I'm experiencing, you're experiencing, because we're united, we're one and the same. And I thought, man, how fearful I am of fear. How afraid I am of fear. And the story of the Buddha gaining his enlightenment crept into my mind and you know the story of the Buddha if you don't know <clears throat> he's sitting under the Bodhi tree and the Mara or Maya which is the 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 the, the senses I guess we could call it the senses the, the the ego the ego self arose in the Buddha's mind and it showed him that you know it showed him the scariest most darkest depths of his soul and the Buddha remained still, remained uninterrupted from his stillness, his self. 
And then the, the Mara showed him his, his virgin daughters and tempted him with his virgin daughters and yet the Buddha still remained still, at peace, in contentment. And it's interesting because I think a lot of us who are on our spiritual paths want to think that we're somehow enlightened or finding our enlightenment, which we all are, we're all working, we're all hiking up the mountain, if you will, we're all going to the same point, whether for Buddhists or Christians or Hindu or Muslim or any other religion that possibly could be, the thousands of religions that are out there. And, uh, but it's interesting when, when certain things arise and when you really step into the shadows, if you will. Because on my walk, I then quieted myself and you know, asked myself, asked, asked God, I said, asked my higher self, why am I fearful? What am I fearing? What truly am I fearing? And I didn't have an answer. It was just my separation from myself. When Jesus is walking on the water, and I believe it's Paul, or Paul Peter, steps out onto the, he says, Lord, I wish to walk on the water with you. And Jesus says, step forth, my brother. And Peter, steps out and he begins walking on the water with, with Jesus. And then he looks, Peter looks down and fear overcomes him in disbelief. And he sinks and he goes, he drops into the water and he reaches out his hand and Jesus grabs him. And Jesus looks at Peter and he says, You man of faith, where is your faith? Where is your belief? I told you to step forth, and you did, but you questioned, and you fell. Such a great metaphor. The Mara doing its best, the ego doing its best to influence our mind, not influence our mind, but to keep us separate from ourselves, from each other. And our dis, you know, the Buddha remaining still, holding that connection to his, his self, our self, our source, knowing his connection, who he is in that moment. And the morrow was defeated. Or Peter walking on the water, having that belief, and then questioning his belief and falling into the water. It's so interesting thinking about the shadows of our own minds. Not really anything real, but the illusions we create out of nothing, out of no thing. It doesn't exist but in our own minds. And how we seem to deviate from entering into the shadows because when we enter into those shadows and we're in that darkness and we look out, everything looks so much brighter, doesn't it? When we have the, the courage, really, the courage to step into the shadows And then we look back out, the shadows aren't so scary. And the light looks so much brighter. Because yesterday when I walked into the shadows, the moonlight lit up the field even more. And I'll be the first to admit it, I love playing in the light. 
thought I had overcome the shadow self, but I'm far from it. But it's a practice and it's a continual moving back into the shadows to see how bright the light truly is. That willingness, that courage to step into our own minds, the places we fear the most, and look at them with an open heart, with an open mind. And when we go through them, when we rummage through them, we see how minuscule the darkness really was. That it was just that fear of that unknown and fear. The Course in Miracles says, only perfect love exists if there is fear and there is not perfect love. Fear is just the illusion. Only perfect love exists. And fear is only based, is only experienced as a result of us creating the illusions in our own consciousness, in our own mind. Playing in the shadows. Having the courage to play in the shadows. And then once we're there, having that awakening, having that broader perspective. Once we're in, once we have so little light and we look out, even a little bit of moonlight looks like the sun. that's it for today. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for listening. Maybe my little <laughs> quandary experience in the shadows will help you take a journey into the shadows of yourself. Play in the shadows and see how bright the light really is. I love you guys. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.